This is my letter to citizens of Africa. Be very careful. They are selling wigs with the hair taken from murdered people and mortuaries. Their aim is to destroy your nations. They know the future lies in you. The wig I was given by a friend has wiped away my family. Please be very careful with some of these wigs. Some of the wigs' papers are written. Yellow viewers, welcome to another educative episode of African Confessions HD right here on Extraordinary Africa. If I still new, in this show, we publish lifetime confessions. I usually you publish anonymously for their own safety reasons. Today, in our video, we have four confessions. So stay tuned uh, as we'll be going through the stories. Viewers, without wasting much of your time, let's go straight into the stories. Our first confession for today is as follows. Hello, uncle. As per tradition, please hide my identity. I am a Namibian lady in the mid-30s, born in a family of three. I am the first born followed by another girl and a boy. Back in days I was at school, I used to boycott lessons and failed in the end. My young sister did worse. She dropped out of school after being impregnated by a local man. Only young brother did what was different. He was such an obedient person. The boy pleased our parents by passing high school. Our parents sold one of their cars to let him go for tertiary education. He went to tertiary education. A tertiary education, he met this girl. They fell in love. The girl was doing tourism and hospitality. My young brother was studying medicine. They finished and graduated. After graduation, he paid Lobola. They then planned for a wedding. The day came. At the wedding, I met one of the sister-in-law's former classmates at the university. We spent the whole day talking general issues. She lagged me and offered me a job to work in a motel. The young lady was a manager of a group of motels. She was from Colombia, came here for tertiary education, finished and find a job here. I can't wait to start my work at a motel. After the wedding, I went to the house of the lady. The following week, I started working at one of the motels in town. At that motel, most of the visitors are from South American countries. I worked there for almost seven years. On the sixth year, the lady was transferred to South Africa. A farewell party was organized. My brother and his wife were also invited. At the farewell party, she gave us wigs. As remembrances, the wigs were so nice. They were made of a mixture of real human hair and other materials. The wig will be in a blue packet. It's written Shitanchi. The following week, the lady left the country. We don't know she left us with problems. Of the people who were given the wigs, I think I'm the only one still alive. Two weeks after the Colombian left the country, my sister-in-law gone mad, escaped at her house and hit by a lorry. One of my workmates who was in attendance passed away after a short illness. Fear increased when I received a message that the Colombian lady died hours after arriving in South Africa. As of me, I started dreaming at the graveyard searching for the owner of the year. I dreamed the same for weeks. I told my family all what was happening. My brother hired a sangoma. The wig was bent to ashes. The following day, my brother died after a short illness. The previous night, I dreamed being chased away by an unusual feature. There was a voice I used to hear at the graveyard. It said, why did you bend me? It threatened to wipe off my people. Recently, we are waiting for my half-brother's body. He died in the United Kingdom after a short illness. I don't know what to do. Most of the Sangomas we are consulting are saying the wigs are made of real human hair. The hair is from murdered people. They are saying the spirits are too f powerful for them. Guys, I am in hot soup. My family members are dying every time. Some family members are blaming me. I am thinking to commit suicide. I know I'm innocent. Please, guys, be careful with these wigs. 
I am regretting. Maybe if I pray all the time, I was going to be saved. Hi everyone. I don't know if it's my place or not. So I grew up in the same neighborhood with this guy. Our mothers were best friends. They were all single moms taking care of their children. Sometimes when my mother was out with work, we could be staying at their house. If their mom was out, he could be with us and her little sister. So we have a very brother-sisterhood bond. His little sister later died. He is the only child of his mother left. I finished my high school and went to varsity. The guy later came the following year. At varsity, I have this friend of mine. I later noticed she is HIV positive and she had been already dating this guy for over a year now. She never disclosed the yeah, status to the guy. So I post this cause. She came back crying and angry last weekend, saying the guy took off the condom during their intimate moment, and she does not know if this is the first time or not. She does not want to tell the guy to get pre because she doesn't want to tell him of her status. She is so concerned on that he violated Yemara. I feel she is not being fair by, t by not telling him. Would it be wrong of me to tip him to go tested? I feel so guilty because the guy is from my area and they met through me. Yellow Extra Owner Africa, please keep me anonymous. Last of last week, I fought with my girlfriend and the fight was brutal. I am the one who started hitting her because she disrespected me to the point where I lost it and hit her. Honestly speaking, I hit her. And then after two minutes, I started regretting it because there is a bad spirit inside our relationship that is controlling us. I am not proud of what I did. I really regret hitting here from the first place. I should have just kept quiet and left. So the, the, the fight led to a breakup and it's eating me from inside to a point where I am not able to study and I am writing soon. We were staying together, but now I moved to my own room. She was everything that I needed in my life, and with her, I was always happy. We were always laughing every day. We were comfortable around each other. We would spend a, a whole week without seeing our friends while we are in our room enjoying each other's company. But only one single day of our fight changed everything. The problem is... This is not our first breakup, and every time we break up, she finds another guy, and they end up having socks. Uh, and after fixing our relationship, I found out the whole story, and it hurts me. So now that's we have break broken up again. I am suspecting she has another boyfriend because she blogged me on all social media platforms, and calls, and also emails. I still love you so much and I'm willing to fix everything that made us to fight and break up because it's a spiritual thing. A prophecy came out that witches are against our relationship because they are jealousy of how happy we are. And it's been eight years together, so they bewitched us to go repel re-ewam and for our relationship not to, to succeed. But the process is, what must I do if I find out that she has a new boyfriend after I have fixed everything spiritually? Because this is something she usually does when we break up. It hurts me a lot. I am here for your comments. You can even comment in a paragraph. I don't mind reading. Yes, thank you so much to everyone who confessed today. We have learned from your stories. As people in life, we learn from other people's mistakes. Um, it's so sad that you ended up um, in this situation you are. Yes, that's life, my sister. You need to be strong. What you need to do? Firstly, you need to seek God. Go and look for a God-fearing church. Start fasting and praying. 
take your time go to mountains spend at least a day praying and fasting as you say you are innocent and maybe the person who gave you the wigs she was also innocent because maybe it might be from the the producer i am very sorry for what is happening and i would like to thank you for informing us uh on this one to every person who was tuned in today that's a story to share to your family and friends it's a warning from our sister who is experiencing bad time after using a wig it's so sad is the world coming to an end guys what's your view on this one is it the is is this the end let's come and deep down there to the second confession what she was saying about what she was saying about let me check let me check i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry guys uh let me check let me check let me check this this one was saying yeah okay this this girl my sister you have to tell that guy you grew up staying together your mother's are best friends for the sake of your mother tell the guy you know he is the only child of his mother uh maybe you love the girl as she is don't remain quiet maybe he is now hiv positive you need to get treatment and move on with life it happens it happens in life to the third confession okay mr men that's not it you should we should not beat ladies it's not right you need to find someone who can be in a mediator between you trying to bring you to a a round table sit down plan then learn from your mistakes that's life we have to move forward Thank you so much viewers for tuning in to Extraordinary Africa. And this is a prayer to do wherever whenever you are God. Sometimes I struggle to give myself grace. It can be hard to forgive myself for things I've done, but I know that you have forgiven me and because you have forgiven me, I can forgive myself. I also sometimes struggle to understand your truth as I grow closer to you. help me to also draw near to your truth in Jesus name i pray amen that was solution angle for you thank you so much bye for now